Hello, this is Jack from tofluency.com and welcome to this English lesson where we are going to talk about the five stages of learning English, but not in a good way. So I'm going to talk about what I see happen to a lot of people when they start this journey or when they restart this language learning journey. And I'm going to talk about what you can do to solve this problem. So we're going to go through quite a lot today and I'm really excited about you being here. Now, if you are new, then please subscribe to this channel. And also, let's just go through a couple of things straight away. So there's some vocabulary for this lesson, which we'll talk about in a second. But first, click that like button. This helps the stream. It shows that you appreciate these lessons, that you like these lessons, and it helps me reach new people. Then, if you want to become a Tofluency YouTube member, then click the join button. It might not be on your mobile, but have a look at it if it's on your desktop and become a member. I'm going to start adding a lot more for new members, inclu including exclusive videos. So more videos just for members. And then after this lesson, feel free to watch more lessons, including this one. Okay. This is the last live video I did, and it's becoming very popular right now. Over 20,000 people have watched it, and it basically talks about how it's important to focus on what matters. So when you're learning English or learning a new skill, starting something new, focus on the most important things, the things that are effective. And I broke this down. I summarized it in these two ways. Listen a lot and use the to fluency method. Okay, so get lots of listening and use the to fluency method. And I'm going to talk about what you should do in order to ensure that you do this over the long term. That's what we're going to talk about today. So there is some vocabulary for this lesson. The first one is excitement. Excitement and Another one is called enthusiasm as well. So you can see excitement and enthusiasm. Both of these things are similar. And um, it just means that you have this energy and good feeling about doing something. So lots of excitement about learning English. I'm excited about giving this lesson. And enthusiasm is similar, where you have that energy and motivation to do something. Um, welcome, Lolly Lolly is a new member. So thank you for joining the to Fluency YouTube membership. Now, the next one is really important for this lesson. And this is a verb. It's the second one. Track. To track something. Another way to say this is to measure something. So think about tracking things or measuring things. You can track your progress. You can track lots of things when it comes to learning English, like the level you have now, how many new words you learn, how many lessons you take, how many sentences you learn, how many times you use English dur during the day. These are all things you can track. And this is going to be very important when we talk about it later. The next one, to give up. To give up means to quit, to give up smoking, to give up learning English. And the verb pattern here is give up plus gerund. Give up smoking, give up learning, etc. And the last one, which I use all the time, is to make progress, which means to improve. So if you make progress with your English, you improve your English. Excitement, track, give up enthusiasm and make progress. So what I've done is I've broken it down into five stages of learning English. And this is a cycle that repeats. So I see this repeated all the time and it's something that I do as well when it comes to other things. Now, if you want to learn more about this in depth, 
then get my book, The Five-Step Plan for English Fluency. This is free to download. There is a link for that in the description. So I'm just gonna say hi to everybody very briefly. Um, we're gonna do questions at the end. So if you have any questions, then be sure to stick around, to stay until the end, and you can ask me questions then. And I'm going to ask some questions as well during this live lesson so that you can feel involved in this, so that you can feel like you are part of this. Okay. Let's go back to this and talk about stage one. So stage one, when you start a new goal, when you are thinking about doing something big is excitement. It's excitement because what you do is this. You say, I am here, I want to be here. And how amazing is it going to be when I am here? Hopefully you can see this on your screen. Yes, you can. So you are here, you want to be here. This is going to be amazing. My life is going to change. When I have a fluent level of English, I currently don't have a fluent level of English, but when I have a fluent level of English, it's going to feel amazing. You are here, you're not fit, you are unhealthy, and you think it's going to be amazing when I am ripped, when I am in great shape and strong, I have muscles, etc. Or I can't play the guitar right now, but it's going to be amazing when I'm an expert and I'm really good at playing the guitar. Now, those three goals, fluent in English, a C1 level, being ripped and muscular, being able to play the guitar, these are big goals. These are things that are difficult to reach where you have to do a lot of work. But at first, when you start thinking about it, you're really excited. So you have lots of enthusiasm about it. And you're thinking about how your life is going to change. That's the, the part where you feel great, when you feel fantastic, okay? So that's stage one. And I'm sure you've been there as well. Now, stage two is dedication. So see that on your screen, dedication, okay? So this is when you think about what you need to do in order to reach this goal. So the initial stage, you're excited, you have enthusiasm. The next stage is dedication, where you think about, okay, in order to learn the guitar, I need to buy this guitar course and practice three hours a day. Or when it comes to working out and getting healthy, I need to eat salads, fruits and vegetables, and do lots of exercise. When it comes to learning English, I need to take lots of lessons. I need to get grammar books and study really hard and learn verbs and verb tables. And this is where you have this dedication, okay? This is where you have this dedication where you are so focused on your goal that you are working an hour, two, three, maybe five hours a day on this new goal. You're completely dedicated to it. You are constantly thinking about doing what you want to do. You're constantly reading articles on how to improve. You're looking at people who have reached this goal. You're thinking about, okay, later, I'm gonna exercise then and I'm gonna eat this for dinner. No, I'm not going to go out today because I'm going to focus on this goal. No, I'm not going to go to that party because I'm so focused and dedicated on this goal. Okay. Lavinia has a question. Thank you for the super chat. Give up is with the ING form? Yes. So to give up learning, give up smoking, give up studying, give up working, etc. It's always with the ING form, the gerund. Thank you again. Okay, so to so go back to this, dedication. 
you're fully dedicated and you're doing what you think is the best thing to do. But stage three is difficulty or when things get difficult, when your dedication isn't quite there. Now, an example of this is let's say you want to get fit and healthy, but then there's a party weekend. You, your friends invite you to the, the beach house and you go to the beach house. There's alcohol everywhere, chocolate, chips, bad foods, fast foods everywhere. And this is difficult because you have your ex a goal that you're excited about, you're dedicated, but you're in this situation where it's difficult to do. So you drink, you have some beer, you have some chips, you have lots of chocolate, lots of McDonald's, and you, you don't stick with your goal. Or when it comes to learning English, you get sick. So you're in bed for three days. You don't do any English. And then you find it difficult again to get motivated and dedicated. The same with learning the guitar. You hurt your fingers playing basketball. You can't play for a week. You have this difficulty in doing something. Now, usually it's because of time and other commitments. Okay, time and other commitments. It might be a wedding weekend or your children get sick and you have to stay home or you just get really busy with family life and you don't have that time to dedicate. And this is when things start getting difficult. You're not feeling excited or motivated anymore. You don't feel that dedicated. And this can happen a week after getting started, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. It usually happens early on, especially if you are super dedicated in the beginning and trying to do four, five hours a day. Now, let's get to the next stage. And this, this is important. This is one of the key parts. Stage four, you're unhappy. You're unhappy. You are unhappy, okay? Because you say this to yourself. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. Now, this is the key part. And you can think about it in terms of, let's say you are climbing a mountain, a very big mountain, and you start climbing the mountain with that enthusiasm and excitement. I can't wait to reach the top. It's going to be amazing. And you work really hard. You're dedicated. You keep walking and walking and walking. And then somebody says, you know, we've got another 10 hours to go. And at that point you think, oh goodness me, I've put all this work in, I've done all this work and I've worked so hard, but I'm only here when I want to be here. And this happens with me when it comes to health and fitness, where I work really hard it trying to improve myself, let's say it's soccer. And I work really hard for six weeks and then I play a game and I play terribly. I don't feel like I have improved at all. I feel like I should be here, but I'm really here. Or learning the guitar. You practice for two months, you work really hard at it and then you go to a party and somebody passes you the guitar and you start playing and you're just not good at it. And somebody else takes a guitar and is a wizard. He's going ding, 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 and just playing beautifully. Or with learning English, you've done a study plan for six weeks. You are dedicated. You've, you've worked really hard at it. And then you have a conversation with somebody and you, you just can't speak. You think, oh, I want to be here, but I'm here. And especially if you're working really hard at it for six weeks, which is quite a long time, four hours a day, but you're still here and not here. That's when a lot of people move on to stage five, which is to give up, okay? Where you think 
it's not worth it. I am putting in all this work and all this energy and I'm not where I want to be. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? It's not worth it. I'm going to give up. Now, let me know below if this has happened to you before with English, when you have worked really hard with it and then you are only here when you want to be here and you've given up. Maybe this has happened with you with something else because it happens with me. It's happened with me so many times with the guitar where I put in the energy. I think I'm going to get better. I'm going to get better, but I'm only getting a little bit better and all that energy doesn't seem worth it. Okay. Um, Andre, thank you for your donation. Are you a frustrated musician? Lol, I am very frustrated. And I think frustrated is a really good word here. You get frustrated. You're just so frustrated because you want to really push on. Um, and you want to be here, but you're, you're only here. I see it happen all the time. So many people send me an email saying, I've worked hard, but I've still got this, this lower level. Now, people are saying it's happened to me too. Um, Fun Hacks Tube says, yes. Quam says, yes, that's happened to me. Lolly Lolly says, I'm not going to give up even though it's hard sometimes. Yeah. And if you're watching the replay, please let me know in the comment section below too. Okay. So this is a key part. I'm just going to go through these stages quickly again. And then we're going to talk about a solution. And then I'll take your questions. So stage one, excitement. I'm so excited about this new, this new journey, this new English journey. I'm going to be up here. My life is going to change when I get there. Stage two, dedication. Okay, I'm going to work four hours a day to reach my goal over the next few weeks. Stage three, you find it difficult to continue going because you're trying to go for four hours a day and that's not sustainable. Stage four is you say, what? I'm not there yet. I haven't improved in this time. I'm not speaking English fluently yet. So stage five is I give up. It's not worth it. I'm going to put that phrase in the comment section. It's not worth it. Okay. So those are the five stages. Again, I'm going to talk about how you can overcome this in a second. But before I do, please click the uh, like button on this stream. So if you haven't done that yet, just click the like button. It won't take you a second. And also know that, again, I'm going to do questions at the end of this lesson. And if you want to join the to Fluency membership here on YouTube, just click that join button and join now. That way I get to see members' questions and I'll take members and Super Chat questions first. There are 180 people watching live right now, which is great. Okay. George has sent in a donation. Thank you so much, George, with the thank you. Um, it means a lot. It's great to have you here. And feel free to ask any questions you have. Okay. Now, let's go back to this. I'm going to show you... Um, this picture here. Okay. So can you see this on your screen? This guy here, he's obviously very strong. He's doing something here, which is called squatting to squat, which is a great exercise to do. If you want to learn about exercise English, watch my last lesson. I think you're going to find it very useful. Now, when we talked about stage four, I'm not there yet, okay? I'm not where I want to be yet. That is what a lot of people track, to track, to measure. That's what a lot of people think about when, when they're constantly thinking about their English and if they're making progress. Track yourself here. Now, I'm gonna give an example with exercise first as an analogy, and it'll help you understand this concept a bit more. 
So what I've put here is don't constantly think about your body and your goal. Okay, so don't constantly think about your body and your goal. So if you're thinking about your exercise and getting fit and healthy and stronger, don't constantly think about how you look and where you want to be. Because if you do that, then you're going to be really annoyed with the difference between where you are now and where you want to be. So what I've said here is, and this is not health advice, this is just an example. Two things to track. Track your strength progress. So when it comes to strength, what you can say is the overhead press, okay, where you're lifting a bar over your head, track how much weight you are lifting. So if you're doing 100 pounds at the start of the program, and then six weeks later, you're at 115 pounds, that's great. That's making progress. That is improving. And if you track that, then you're tracking the right things because your strength is related to the muscle you have. The stronger you get, the more muscle you have, more or less, okay? So you're tracking things that you can easily manage and things that are showing you how to improve. And the second one is to, to track calories, how much you're eating. Because if you eat lower than what you normally eat, then you're going to lose body fat, relatively speaking. And that those are two things that you can track in order to know that you're making progress. Two things to measure in order to know that you're improving. Now, when it comes to English, this is what I think is important. Don't constantly think about your level. Okay, this is hard to do, but don't constantly think about your level. Don't constantly think about, I'm here, I want to be here. Because if you do that, there's that massive difference. It's just going to make you feel upset. What you can do is track your level every three months. Okay, so track your level every three months. Now, Lolly Lolly has a question here, which is really important. I feel like I've reached a plateau. I am stuck. What should I do? I work on my English every day. A lot of the time, it's very difficult to track your English level and where you are. Very difficult. The same with your body. You can look in the mirror and guess you know, okay, I've improved somewhat, but generally speaking, it's a slow progress. And beginners will make progress quickly, but then things slow down. It always happens in everything. Guitar, you go from nothing to learning a few chords, and you think, this is amazing. And then things slow down. With English, you go from knowing nothing to having an intermediate level, and then it seems like things slow down. That's why, the next two sentences are so important and what you should focus on instead. So I've put here, do track sentences learned. This is going back to the to fluency method. Again, if you want to learn more about this method, there it is my main video on my channel homepage. So if you just, after this lesson, click to fluency on your phone, um, on my channel, it's the first video you see. Also, watch this lesson here, the last lesson I did. Okay. So, track sentences learned. How many sentences you have learned. Because if you internalize a thousand sentences, your English is going to improve dramatically. Especially if you use the to fluency method to learn them. So let's say you do a hundred sentences this week, new sentences where you, you learn exactly how to repeat them. You put them into Anki to learn them over the long term. 
You learn new vocabulary from those sentences. You write some of them down. And you do that for 100 sentences. You can say, fantastic. I am making progress because I'm using a really effective method and I've done it 100 times this week. That is something to think about and to track. That is something to focus on instead of thinking, I'm here, I want to be here. And then another thing to track is hours spent listening. Hours spent listening where you are listening to things in English. You are listening to podcasts, watching movies, listening to graded readers. Now, I recommend, again, I talk about this a lot, but I recommend finding things that are for your level and things that are enjoyable. So that makes it more effective. But track hours you spend listening because the more you listen, the more you're going to improve. These two things I think are the most important things to focus on when learning English. You can do other things instead if you prefer. But whatever you want to do, whatever you think is most effective, track how much you do of it. Measure how much time you spend doing it. But in this case, how many sentences you have learned and how many hours you have spent listening. And in that way, you can focus on what matters and then just don't have this constant, Ugh, I'm here, I want to be here. Instead, you're saying, I have done so well this week because I have done 100 sentences and listened to four hours of English. Another thing about this as well, and I talked about this in the last lesson, is that when you're in this dedication stage, stage two, what most people do is they try to do too much too soon. Four hours a day, for example. But instead, stage two should be about how can I fit learning English into my daily life so that I can enjoy life, spend time with my family, do my job correctly, and focus on my other hobbies too. How can I bring English into my life in a way that I can do sustainably over the long term? And that's actually step four in the five step plan for English fluency is how are you going to use these most effective methods? So it's quite a lot there to think about. Um, I recommend as well going through this lesson again just to have a good feeling about okay what it is do I need what do I need to work on why do I quit learning English and think about times in the past when you have stopped or you've given up okay you have given up learning English playing the guitar exercising etc those are three big things learning a language learning a musical instrument and getting fit and healthy. Pro probably the three main New Year's resolutions. And a lot of people start New Year's resolutions and then quit because of what I've talked about here. Okay, so again, be sure to like this stream. Go into the description and download, download the book, The Five Step Plan for English Fluency. If you are new here, then subscribe subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell i go at the moment i'm going live every other week every two weeks and then a lesson every two weeks as well i'm also on instagram search for to fluency and find me on there okay so let's take some questions now let's take some questions um why are you not doing more lives so yeah, every two weeks at the moment, live lessons. Sometimes on my phone, mainly in the studio here. I love doing it in the studio. French language is too similar to English language because of the culture, I think. Yeah, for, uh, there are similarities with the French culture or French language, mainly due to history and uh, 1066, where the Normans invaded England um, 
William the, the Conqueror took over and then French and English were both of those were used but the French language there's so many vocabulary items that we use now in English that are from uh, French Lucia says your videos are amazing and your accent is lovely thank you so much for being here it's um it's my pleasure to teach you and if you if you want to support me and then again like the video join as a member and also share this video with your friends maybe on whatsapp or elsewhere can you see this sign it's a little bit dark in here today but this is a, a sign that i couldn't find for a long time and i found it in my garage at home and brought it into the office so please tell me about the live class timing yeah it's i've never been able to have a fixed time because of family life as you know a lot of schools aren't going back now i have children i'm at home quite a lot more teaching and trying to work at home while teaching them at the same time it's not the best at the moment but i'm enjoying it regardless now here's a great question how can i find a native english speaker to practice speaking there are a few main ways you can pay a teacher for one that way you are going to get good lessons the teacher is going to come to class and you have somebody who is going to be dedicated to helping you. You can um, find a friend who will teach you, or you can find a language exchange partner, somebody who wants to learn your language and you spend half the time speaking in English and half the time speaking in your language. I watch your videos daily. Thank you so much, follow your faith. Yeah, I have 500 lessons here. So if you want more from me, just go to my channel and watch some old videos. I do that with channels I like. I go back and watch old videos. Um, I understand everything in English and I'm an English major, but when it comes to speaking, I feel like I don't know anything and the words don't come out of my mouth. I don't know what to do. Focus on basic english when speaking don't try to use complex english so focus on words you already know i also had a video where it talks about asking questions so when speaking and you feel a little bit nervous at first ask somebody some questions so that they do a lot of speaking and then you can take the vocabulary and phrases that they use when they ask you similar questions and it just helps you feel a little bit more comfortable but also work on things that will help you improve your speaking go to my channel and just search for speaking tips i have two videos on that which talk about the best methods that you can use at home to improve your speaking i would say one thing that makes people not speak fluently is thinking that you have to speak in a perfect way yeah and that's a good point there's there's fluency and accuracy and fluency is different than accuracy accuracy is speaking with the right grammar the right words the right sentence structure fluently or with fluency is a bit more where you can speak at a normal pace or at a good pace and you're not constantly uh, 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 you know, words just come out naturally. What do you think about the technique shadowing? I like shadowing if if you can easily shadow, but the Tefluency method focuses a little bit more on accuracy, and then I recommend using some shadowing in order to help you with your fluency. Now, shadowing is when you listen to audio in English and you you copy what the person is saying without stopping the audio so you're constantly listening and saying the downside is a lot of people will mumble they'll mumble and not enunciate properly so find something that you can easily follow but I quite like the method I do like the method and um, one person talked about walking while doing this just walking back and forth try it out 
you might people might see you and think what is this person doing if you're speaking in english or mumbling in english and walking around everywhere i started listening on youtube learning us through a story and it really helped me and watching you as well thank you how to maintain your british accent while you live in america is american accent not affected your native accent great question yeah i've been here 10 years it does affect it a little bit i tend to just focus on vocab i change my vocabulary to use words that people use here just to make it easier so you know i say soccer all the time instead of football and i quite like the word soccer now but my accent hasn't changed in a big way what's the best way to achieve native like intonation um the tofluency method will help you with this because it works on intonation too so if you you know if you have that rise fall intonation or the fall intonation or in australia they're they're always going up at the end intonation then just copy speakers so find audio and copy their intonation i'm taking ielts classes and i want to improve my reading and speaking what books and tools do you recommend uh, past papers are the best for ielts so find the ielts website has lots of past papers model answers and you can, can just you can go through these and learn exactly what's on the test get lots of listening practice lots of reading practice and then find a teacher who will help you with your writing and speaking and they'll be able to give you a good idea of, of what level you are currently at and what you need to improve do you speak spanish uh yeah it's been a long time since i spoke i spoke to a friend's um dad who's from colombia the other day we spoke in spanish for a little bit but i had the same i had the same um problem is what the other person talked about at first you're nervous you're thinking ah oh, what words to use think about how to say stuff but what comes out naturally to me are the phrases that i've just learned and it's the phrases that i've learned hace mucho tiempo que no hablo en español and that comes out naturally and then in french it's it's things like it's going to be hard it's been a while pouvez-vous me dire comment tirer le banc phrases come out naturally but if you're thinking ah oh, the word the grammar etc it's harder to do that's why i say learn through sentences all the time i've kind of answered that question where you uh, i'm unable to remember context words when i talk again phrases sentences it makes such a big difference I'm not confident while I'm speaking with someone who's fluent. I make a lot of mistakes, but when I'm speaking with someone who's under my level, I don't make a mistake. Yeah, it again, it's this confidence and it comes with lots of practice and lots of time learning the sentences um and then also just getting that speaking practice. So when I say the two things to focus on, these are things on your own, listening and the to fluency method. Whereas you also want to get speaking practice with people it really does help monica says i'm from colombia yeah and when i spoke to him i said something with the spanish i think it was like medellin or calle instead of calle lolly lolly says great accent in french thank you I follow you because your accent it's a magical one so kind we have um nurul from bangladesh does trying to be a perfectionist kill your fluency Def definitely yeah it it is it like if you try to be a perfectionist in anything it kills it kills everything um because you never actually do what you want to do so let's say you're a perfectionist when it comes to playing the guitar you'll never play in front of your friends if you want to be a perfectionist um let's have a look i'm from mexico i'm new here 
Rene, thank you for being here. Nauman says, please set arrange online learning session on a daily basis, whether it may be just for 30 minutes. Uh, I, I, I went through a time of doing a video a day. It's really tiring. It's a lot of work. But yeah, I, I'll do more videos. Like As soon as I can get more time coming into the studio, into this office space, I'll make a lot more videos. I started listening to audiobooks to improve my English and no more words because when I'm speaking with someone, I forget everything. I still don't have confidence. That is how the to fluency method will, will make a difference. I'm from Colombia and I love that you know a little bit about our culture. Yeah, I spent 10 days or two weeks there in 2007. It's great. I've got some friends from Colombia too. Okay, so this is a good way to end it. In fact, I'm just going to give a quick summary about this because I think it's such an important thing um, when it comes to to learning English because this we don't want this stage five where you give up learning. We don't want to have that. So it's important to watch this video after this one where you listen a lot, talk about the Tefluency method and then track what's important. So don't constantly think about your level where you are now and where you want to be. Instead, track how many sentences you have learned this week and track how many hours you've spent listening. And then every three to six months, do a test with a teacher and ask them if you have improved because that will give you a good idea if you're doing the right things. And then think about this as more of a long-term goal where you're not just saying, okay, I want to learn English. I'm going to work hard for six weeks and then give up. Think about how you can reach this goal in 12 months, in one year. Going from B1 to C1 in a year is fantastic. And that is what most people can do, everyday people who have lives and jobs and activities and other things going on, like to party. Um, they, they can fit that into their life. Whereas if you just go really hard too soon, six weeks, you get burnt out. You lose that energy, desire, motivation, and you think, oh, it's not worth it. So take it slowly, get lots of repetition, do the things that work. And yeah, be sure to watch those videos I've mentioned because it's really going to help you when it comes to um, making this a long-term thing. Okay, so with that in mind, again, click that like button before you go share this lesson with a friend and then go check out my other videos and if you want to support this channel and get uh, exclusive videos then become a Tefluency member okay thank you all for being here i'll speak to you soon Bye bye